Since we're going to be baptizing today, I want to talk about baptism. And um, it seems that everything is always changing in it. I mean, just about the time I find music I like, music begins to change. Just about the time I get used to wearing uh, bell bottoms with uh, bell bottoms with low riders, you know, then they then they change that. Then I get used to wearing a four button suit, and they go back to a two button suit. I mean, our clothes are always changing. The rules in life are always changing. Speed, speed limits are always changing. People are always changing. But there's two things that will never change. God will never change. The word says he's the same yesterday, today, and what? Forever. The second thing that's never going to change is the way you go to heaven. That's never going to change. We don't go to heaven by our good works. No one's get, going to get there by attending church. I know that shocks you, but coming to church is not going to get you to heaven. You're not going to get to heaven by how much money you give to God through the, the, the social ministries or through the homeless shelter or to the local church. And you're not going to go to heaven by being baptized. Baptism will not get you to heaven. John chapter 14 verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. That's it. No other way. Most people don't even know when they're going to be saved. Um, when they're going to give their life to Christ. People don't wake up one day and just say, Think today I'm going to get saved. Doesn't work like that. Think about the thief on the cross. Do you think today that they went out to be crucified? The while he's in his cell that morning brushing his teeth, he says, you know what, I think I, it's a good day to get saved. No. He got on the cross, looked at Jesus, heard what was being said, what Jesus had to say, and he said, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. And then he got down off the cross and was baptized. No. And that's why we know baptism doesn't save you. Because Jesus said to him, Today, you'll be with me in paradise. So baptism won't save us. Paul, on the road to Damascus, he didn't know he was going to get saved that day. He was headed down to Damascus. He was going to pull Christians out of the to church service, and he was going to kill them. But he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Didn't know that morning when he got to brush his teeth that that day he was going to get saved either. Matthew was a tax collector. He was sitting at his tax collecting table when Jesus came by and he said, Matthew, come follow me. He got up and left. He didn't brush his teeth that morning and say, going to collect some taxes, then I'm going to go get saved today. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. He didn't say, I'm going to brush my teeth and get up in that tree, and then today I'm going to get saved. But when Jesus came by and said, Zacchaeus, you come down. I'm going to your house today. Didn't know he's going to get saved. Peter was fishing. Had no clue that day he was going to get saved. And most of us didn't go to church on a particular Sunday with the intention of giving our life to Christ. We didn't do that. We never know when it's going to take place. And now hear this. That's the reason that lost people think baptism is salvation. What? Okay, hold on. That's the reason I think that lost people think baptism is salvation. You see, we don't invite people. We don't, we don't say, hey, come down to church today. I'm going to get saved today. Because we don't know we're going to get saved. So we can't invite folks to come see us get saved. But after we get saved and we find out that Christ told us to be baptized, then we tell people, hey, I've been saved. Come watch me be baptized. And so those who are unchurched and, and unlearned of the Word of God, they associate baptism with salvation because you said, come to my baptism, and we said you're saved, so they think that's what saved them. The old country preacher said, you can be baptized, lay every tap on the creek, knows your social security number, you'll still die and go to hell. Yeah. It's not about how many times you get dipped, dunked, or jump in. That won't do it. That'll wash the dirt off your body, but Jesus has to wash the dirt out of us. In order for us to get to heaven. So baptism is not salvation. But baptism should be our first act of obedience. See, when we get saved, we become obedient. After we're saved, we say, 
when we give our life to Christ, I commit myself to you. You become my Lord, which means my master, my ruler, my controller, my decision maker. And since you said, get saved and be baptized, I'm going to be baptized. Most of us don't understand baptism when we get baptized. It's just that when we got saved, the preacher or someone around said, now you need to be baptized. And they go, oh, really? Mm -hmm. So we get baptized. And later, as we grow in the Lord, we begin to understand why we got baptized. If baptism is not salvation, then why does Jesus make such a big deal out of baptism? Well, in Mark chapter 8, verse 34, he, he makes this statement. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself... And what does it say next? Take up his cross and follow me. Now that's a curious statement. Take up his cross. What does that mean? You see, during the day that he said this, if you saw somebody walking down a road carrying a cross on their shoulders, you didn't think, I bet they're going to a picnic. <laughs> if they had a cross on their shoulder, you said, uh-oh, he's fixing to be crucified. And everybody knew where he was headed. You know what Jesus was saying? If you're going to follow me, then you're going to let everybody know you're mine. Unashamedly, without reservation, you don't care who knows, there's no secret service in God's, for God's saints. And he says, just like everybody knows why you're going to the cross, everybody's going to know you're my child when you are baptized. Because see, that's a public thing. And he says, I want you to come after me because you're not ashamed of me. Baptism is how we publicly express that we've given our life to Jesus Christ. That's how we do that. That's, how we, that's, our, first, that's our first testimony meeting. Amen. You know, the first time you testify about what you believe. I like to say it like this. Baptism is an outward expression of an inward happening. So if nothing's happened inside, then you're not baptized. Because baptism expresses what's happened inside. You say, but what if I wasn't saved yet? Well, then you just got dunked. And there's a difference between a dunking and a baptism. You can jump in the swimming pool all day long, but that's not baptism. You're baptized after you give your life to Christ and you've been changed on the inside. Then you come to be baptized to publicly proclaim, Hey, let me tell you what happened to me on the inside. And you're going to show it to them as you act out what happened to you and what you believe. Amen. With that being said, now take my little blue book, would you? And turn to page 11. Page 11 starts this way. Now there's something you can do for Jesus. It's assuming that you've now given your life to Christ. You've prayed and you've, you said, Lord, I realize I can't get to heaven without you. So now that I've prayed, what do I need to do? Matthew says in 1032, Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father who is in heaven. Okay, now here's my thought on that. When I read that passage, this is the, the mind picture I get. I see God the Father sitting on the throne. I see Jesus sitting at the right, right hand of the Father down here at His feet. And every time we tell somebody that we've given our life to Christ, either by baptism or by the spoken word, I can see Jesus bumping Daddy in the knee saying, See, I told you He's ours. Every time we acknowledge Him before men, He acknowledges us before the Father in heaven. Now turn to page one and go to page um, 13. And the question is, why should we be baptized? If it doesn't save us, why should we be baptized? Well, number one, because Christ commanded us to be baptized. If you read, if you read uh, Matthew 28, verse 19, it says uh, that Jesus said, Make disciples of all nations and then baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. So today when I baptize the three folks we're going to baptize, I will say something like this. I'm now going to baptize you as my brother. Because see, once we get saved, we become a part of the family of God. Okay, so you're my brothers, you're my sisters, so I baptize you as my brother in Christ. And then I'll do this. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Why did I do that? Because he told me to do that right here. And so that's why I baptize you, because Christ said to do that. 
The second reason we're baptized because obeying Christ's command shows that you know him. 1 John 2, 3 says, We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. And what was one of his commands? When you get saved, be baptized. And so by being baptized, you're saying, this is one of his commands. I may not understand all of what it means, but if he said do it, I'm going to do it. All right? The third reason, because it shows you have accepted Christ as your Savior, Acts 8, 12. When they believed the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So he's saying they didn't just go jump in the river. They did it after they gave their life to Christ to show folks that they had given their life to Christ. Now today, when we baptize these folks, without saying a word, they are saying to you, I want you to know I've given my life to Christ. And unashamed today, I take up my cross publicly to say, I want all y'all to know, I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm saved. And the last reason is because being a Christian means to be as much like Christ as possible. What's the root word of Christian? Christ. A Christian. I'm a Christian. When I get saved, I become a Christian. A Christian is someone who patterns their life as much like Christ as they possibly can. Will we be perfect like Jesus? No, but we can strive to be like Jesus. And since Jesus in Mark 1, 9 was baptized, as Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan, he set an example for us of, of being baptized. So we're going to be as much like him as we can, and we too are going to be baptized so we can follow in his footsteps. Turn the page. When are we to be baptized? As soon as you believe in Christ, you say, man, I accepted Christ 20 years ago and I never was baptized. Well, let's get on with it. Stop waiting. It's time. John, excuse me, Acts 2.41 says, those who accepted his message were baptized that day. They just did it. They got saved. They got baptized. They want everybody to know they're, they're baptized. So what's the meaning of baptism? It is a symbol of Christ's burial and resurrection. See, look here. We believe that Jesus Christ lived, he died and was buried. And that three days later, he was raised from the dead. Amen? Well, that's what baptism does. We say, just like Christ lived, died, and was buried, so we bury you in a water grave, and then he was resurrected from the dead, then we raise you up out of water to symbolize now I've been buried with Christ, and now I'm alive in Christ. I'm going to walk a new life now. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 says, Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised from the dead on the third day. Let's read that paragraph at the bottom. Baptism does not make you a believer. It shows that you are already one. Baptism does not save you. Only your faith in Christ does that. Baptism is like a wedding ring. It's the outward symbol of the commitment you made in your heart. You put that wedding ring on, you say to everybody, I don't have to say a word. What does that say? I'm married. When you see it, you know. When you see these three folks going that water day, you're going to know. Without them saying a word, you're going to know they've been saved. They've been saved. Next page. <clears throat> How are we to be baptized? Like Jesus was baptized by being immersed in water. Matthew 3.16 said, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went down into the water. Oh, but he's going to mess up my hair. Immersed. The Greek word for baptism is uh, baptizo. Baptizo means to immerse, to plunge, to put under, to be without measure. To have so much water on you, you can't measure it all. Okay? Every baptism in the Bible was by immersion under water. In Acts 8, 38, 39, Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and, and Philip baptized them, and when they came up out of the water. Every time, it's about being immersed. Being immersed. Pastor, why do you make such a big deal? Listen, let me tell you something. If the thief on the cross got to heaven without baptism, I believe there's going to be people who get to heaven that never baptized. I believe that. So baptism is not salvation. Make sure we understand. However, baptism is our way of following Christ and being obedient to his command. And so it's just a very simple command. That's one of the easiest ones we can do. 
And one of the most joyful was, because let me tell you what, today when these three folks are baptized, each time they come up out of the water, that's what you're going to hear. I mean, it's like, it's, it's like everybody here is rejoicing with you in your testimony that you've given your life to Jesus. Now, <clears throat> once we get saved, we don't have to be, and by the way, there is no such word in this book called rebaptized. It says one Lord, one faith, one baptism. But however, some folks had their baptism on the wrong side of the cross. When they were young, they were immersed, but they weren't saved. Later, they accepted Christ, and now they say, well, I want to be rebaptized." No, you were dumped before, now you need to be baptized. You're getting your baptism on the right side of the cross. That's what's taking place. Okay? One of the ladies, when she came forward to be baptized, she said, after one of my sermons, Pastor, I realized I need to get my baptism on the correct side of the cross. And so we're going to baptize her today. It's going to be a joy for us to do that. If today you've not given your life to Christ, the first step is not to be baptized. The first step is to give your life to Jesus. And then everything else comes after that. Matter of fact, the, what we call the, the, the uh, Great Commission is where Jesus says to his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Make disciples of all nations, number one. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And thirdly, and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. Remember a while ago when I said everything's changing? Today we got folks say, well, I want to I do all this study first. I want to study this. I want to study that. I want to do that. Well, it's true that you have to have something to base your faith on. That's why the scripture says faith comes by hearing the message of the word of God. You can't give your life to Jesus if you've not heard the message of the word of God. But that doesn't mean 20 years of theological study. When you come to understand that God is who he says he is and Christ is God's son, you need to give your life to Jesus. And then you'll be baptized. And all this stuff you learn after that, I mean, it's just amazing. All, I'm almost 50 years old now. <laughs> I didn't say which side of 50. I said I'm almost 50. And I'm still amazed when I read. Every time you read this thing, you get something new out of it. Every time you are able to connect new dots and go, Wow, I didn't realize that. I hope today we've connected some dots for you. And if you need to give your life to Christ, we'd love to show you how you can do that. Pastor, I'd love to give my life to Christ. Listen, this little booklet is called Salvation Made Simple. In the first pages of it, it talks about how to be saved. And the fact that you can know. You don't have to wonder if you're going to heaven or not. You can know that you're saved. And then the second part talks about baptism. And so... Take that with you. Read that. But if today you say, Preacher, I, I think I know enough. I'm ready to give my life to Christ. We'd love to invite you to do that. You come. We'll have someone open the scripture with you and show you how you can give your life to Christ today. Or maybe you'd say, Pastor, I've given my life to Christ, but I'm like these folks. I need to get my baptism on the right side of the cross. Or I've never been baptized since the day I gave my life to Jesus. I need to be baptized. Then we invite you today to come and say, Pastor, at, at the next time we can do this, I'd like to be baptized. That's my two invitations. So we're going to stand just a moment. We're going to sing. And, and know this. I don't give a long invitation. I think the Holy Spirit speaks to you. You know it. You just need to come. And so when we start singing, I invite you to come. You can give your life to Christ. You can accept, you can accept Him as your Savior. Or you can come and say, I need to be baptized. Or you might say, I've done both of those. I'd like to join the church. We'd love to have you come. Okay, that's all we ask of. We don't care what denomination you're from. If you've accepted Christ and been baptized, welcome. All right? Let's stand together and we'll pray. And then we'll invite you to come. Father God, I love you. I thank you for the simplicity of your word. How simple is salvation? Jesus died to pay my sin debt. And all I had to do is ask him to do it. Give my life to him. And after that, to follow him in baptism. Lord, today I pray we've made things simple today so folks will know. Yes, I need to give my life to Jesus. Yes, I need to be baptized. Yes, I need to be a member of this fellowship. Lord, whatever they need today, I pray, God, you'd make them feel comfortable coming forward to say, Pastor, tell me what to do. For I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.